Katon. Hey yo guys welcome back to the channel this is a story about what if Naruto the melt, as a child, Naruto is taken in by Sarutobi to be his chosen successor to the mantle of Hokage. He develops a bloodline long thought lost to the world and learns along the way that, though he may be hated for his demon, his will of fire will burn brightly, and let's see what changes will come to the Naruto verse before we start don't forget to give a like and subscribe to this channel for more what ifs and check the description for the creator of this great fanfic, so let us start. Chapter 5. A trick of the eyes Naruto groaned and banged his head on the table before him. His grandfather had thought it would be a fine time to introduce Naruto to the joys of paperwork and the little boy had been ecstatic to learn more about being Hokage, until he met the mounds of parchment. He sighed and looked over to where Sarutobi was signing away at whatever was in front of him, his pipe billowing like a smokestack, small curses coming from his lips. He turned to the small blonde sitting at the table next to him and took his pipe from between his teeth. Looking at the clock, he groaned. That's it. Come on Naruto, we're going for a walk. I'm sure you're tired of sorting those papers. Hi, Sensei. Serutobi nodded to the guard at the door and they walked out into the street in front of the Hokage Tower, stretching the kinks from their bodies. So Naruto, where shall we go? I don't know Sensei, you're the one who wanted to leave. Serutobi laughed and shook his head. It was true, he hated being cooped up for long. Well, let's go do a little shopping, hem. Perhaps we can finally find you a weapon that would suit you. I don't know Sensei. Nothing sticks out and I'm not tall enough yet for a staff. The old cage sighed and nodded to people as they passed. The ones with harsh glares for Naruto received a dose of his killing intent. Naruto, I believe we've established that, as unfortunate for me as it is, you simply aren't built to use most of my styles. Bojutsu just isn't you. Neither is monkey style taijutsu. And Guy was heartbroken when he found you weren't a match for Goken. But, on the other hand, that leaves several possibilities for you. You don't have to follow our paths, instead you can beat out your own. Yeah, but, it's hard learning from someone when they are learning along with you. Guy Sensei and I have tried several different styles and none have worked. He learns just as much as I do. I'm supposed to be the student, Naruto, one universal truth you must accept is that you never stop learning. The day you stop learning is the day you die and disappear. Knowledge is like a mighty river, always flowing and you can't help but be swept up by its current. You can safely drink from it at times, but the true thrill is diving in and letting it take you away to unknown territories. Sensei, you're preaching again. Sarutobi laughed and ruffled the boy's hair. So I was. But you have to understand that I learn something every day. Life is learning and you never stop. He let Naruto think on that as they continued their walk. Before long, they had arrived at the weapons shop. Serutobi loved to come here and walk amongst the weapons, testing the staffs and flipping the kunai back and forth. He hadn't allowed Naruto to use anything more than blunt kunai for target practice and the boy had proven a dab hand with throwing weapons, but he still needed a melee weapon for those up close and personal encounters. They stepped inside and Serutobi nodded to the owner before walking to the back and weighing the staffs in his hands. He disliked many of them, but then again, most weapons were poor when compared to Enma's staff transformation. Serutobi snatched a heavy oaken staff from the display and twirled it in the air before settling it behind his back in a crouch. One reason he loved this particular store was the large areas between the weapons and the high ceilings, allowing you to try out you hopefully future purchases. Naruto wandered around the racks, running his fingers over the staffs before shaking his head and heading for something more, pointless. He picked up a sword but quickly put it back. He wasn't big and strong enough for swords yet. Instead, he meandered over to the daggers and kanai. Somewhere in Naruto's mind, he just got tickled looking at knives. It was like he had a genetic predisposition to them. He knew soon he would have to start training with weapons for real, but he still had as of yet to find one that suited him. Kanai were used by everyone. Shuriken were used by everyone. He wanted a unique weapon, one that would make him stand out. There were several Kenjutsu masters, and his grandfather was renowned for Bojutsu. His uncle Asuma, who he had never met, was a master with trench knives. 
Naruto vaguely heard Sarutobi chatting with the proprietor of the establishment and went back to his browsing. The knives here were either too ornate or too plain. None had that edge he wanted. He frowned and turned away from them. Perhaps he should look at knuckle dusters. He sighed as he quickly brushed away that thought. Way too plain and brutal. With knives there was a subtlety that was close to poetry. He'd watched Anko play with hers often enough as she waited in the Hokage's lobby that he knew they were a force to be reckoned with. But knives also had a drawback. They were good as throwing weapons, but they demanded that you be up close and personal. Swords gave you a little bit of distance. Knives demanded that you be close as you took a life, he picked up a plain-looking dagger and twirled it in his hands like Anko had shown him. It lacked balance for throwing but felt pleasant in the hand. He put it back with a shake of his head. He still couldn't find anything that suited him, Sarutobi frowned as he spoke with the owner. They had both been watching as Naruto rummaged through the weapons and he was still quite dismayed that Naruto didn't like any of them. I don't know what to think Kawasi. He just can't seem to get comfortable with any weapons. Most children his age think any kind of sword or sharp thing is, cool. Naruto just looks upon them with disdain. Hokage-sama, perhaps the child just isn't ready yet. I've heard of the training regimen you and Guy San put him through. He has a lot on his plate. And you said earlier he had started helping you with your paperwork. Hi, I did. And he is a big help, even though I have to catch him sometimes putting things in the wrong pile. He has his own ideas about what is important and what isn't. You know, his sixth birthday is coming up in a few days. Ah of course. The day of the festival. Will you be attending? Sarutobi frowned and knocked his pipe out against his leg. I'll give my yearly speech but after that I shall retire to my home. We have a party planned for Naruto and all his little friends. The celebration is mostly for the civilians anyway. The clans will be attending Naruto's party. It's an occasion for them to catch up with each other and watch the children be children. Plus, Eri makes the most delicious cakes, the owner of the shop laughed and slapped his hand on the counter. Imagine the Hokage of all people being weak need for his daughter-in-law's cooking. Sarutobi chuckled along with the man and patted Naruto on the head as he wandered up. Find anything to your liking. Naruto shook his head in a negative and Sarutobi sighed heavily. Don't worry. One day, you'll find the weapon you want and I'll train you to the fullest in it. We can't do everything at once. Naruto nodded and they said their farewells to the owner of the shop. As they walked back to the tower, Sarutobi smiled down. What do you say to lunch before we go back to our dreary job? The small blonde nodded vigorously. Sarutobi smiled as he watched Naruto and his friends play in the yard. Kiba and Naruto were entirely too energetic and it showed in their game of tag. Hanada and Shino did their best to keep up while Shikamaru and Choji sat to the side, too lazy to do anything but watch. He looked over to the adults and smiled at their obvious comfort. They were enjoying themselves as much as the children. Noticeably absent was little Ino, though Inoichi had seen fit to come. Sarutobi sat back again with his notes on the Uzumakis and read a little more. Naruto's father had been an absolute brute on the battlefield, the ultimate frontliner. A few special kunai thrown around the battlefield and he could decimate an army. Little was known about his better half, although from what he'd read so far, he would guess she was an assassin like the rest of her relations. He couldn't be too sure though. He heard Naruto laugh and lifted his head to see Kiba sprawled out on the ground, holding his nose. The boy had run headfirst into a tree and now everyone was laughing. He ran to Sum, who gave him a hug and told him to be a big boy about it and sent him back out to play. Sarutobi shook his head and sighed. It wouldn't be long before playtime would be over and they'd be sent out to act in honor of their village. He stiffened a little when he read a particular excerpt from the scroll he'd found. He hadn't noticed it or had thought it inconsequential at the time, but it caught his eye now. Those born with the defect can allow nature to swallow them whole. He didn't know what to make of that. They were assassins of the highest caliber and now, ah, it was too frustrating. He sat the notes down and watched the children play some more, before he felt someone standing at his side. Hokage-sama. Ah, guy. What can I help you with? I just wanted to drop in and wish Naruto-kun a happy birthday. It isn't often he gets a day like this anymore. I agree. I keep the boy quite busy when you're not teaching him. How is he progressing by the way? Quite well. 
He isn't a master, but he won't be helpless when it comes to taijutsu. He finally showed me his suchi bunshin the other day finally. He is quite proficient with it. Hi, I am quite proud of him for learning it so quickly and improving himself with it. He's come far in two years. Hi, he has. Excuse me, Hokage-sama, I'm going to give Naruto his gift before I have to go. Sarutobi nodded and pulled his pipe out, but found his hands suddenly full. He blinked at the little bundle shoved into his arms and found himself looking up at a fuming airy. Hold him please while I go inside and change. What happened? Your grandson thought it would be a good idea to upchuck all over my new dress. I'll be right back. Sarutobi chuckled and bounced Konohamaru on his knee while the little boy squealed with delight. You shouldn't have done that you know. Now your mother will be upset with you. Konohamaru just giggled. The four children lay on the ground panting from their efforts to catch one another. Kiba and Naruto had finally called a truce and decided to relax. Shikamaru and Choji ambled over as they all sat in a circle and chattered. Mom says that I might be able to get a Ninkin in a couple years, but I want one now. She just doesn't understand. Um, Kiba-kun, maybe you just aren't ready yet. Kiba gave Hanada a pouting look and she giggled into her hand. Naruto grinned at his feral friend and fang fellow. Maybe you aren't Kiba but don't worry. When you get one, I'm sure it'll be really cool. Shino pushed his miniature shades up his nose and nodded. Hi Kiba, but having a companion is also a large responsibility. My Kikai bugs require constant watching and father has told me that the older I get, the larger the colonies get. They will require even more care. Kiba hung his head lower and sighed. He hated the word, responsibility. Before any more conversation could start up, the group heard footsteps and turned to see a very muscular man clad in green. Naruto beamed and leapt to his feet. Guy sensei Yash. Hello Naruto-kun. I hope you are having a most youthful birthday. A collective scream of his name from the adults made Guy wince and rub his head sheepishly before turning to a group of wide-eyed youngsters and one grinning Jinchuriki. He knelt down in front of Naruto and produced a scroll from his belt. Naruto cocked his head to the side and pointed at the scroll. What's that sensei? This, Naruto, is a ceiling scroll. Inside of it, is your birthday present. Tell me, have you studied seals yet? Naruto shook his head and Guy sighed. I would suggest you study them then. There aren't many seal masters in the world and it is a sorely needed skill in this world. I'll show you how to use them and you can keep the scroll as well to study okay. Naruto nodded and all the kids watched as Guy used his chakra to unseal Naruto's present. Out from the scroll popped two books, two bags full of what looked like game pieces, and, a double-sided game board. Naruto looked at his teacher, his eyes asking the unspoken question. This, Naruto, is a game board for playing Shugi and Go. These games have been revered throughout the ages as helping to hone awareness and strategy for the battlefield. I want you to learn how to play them and when you do, we'll play a game. A healthy mind is just as essential as a healthy body. Never let it be said I have a totally one-track mind. Naruto hugged his sensei's neck and thanked him for the gift, while the others looked strangely at Shikamaru. He was looking hungrily at the game board, as if he wanted to claim it as his own. Once Guy left and Naruto sat back down, Shikamaru pointed to the game board. Are you going to learn to play? Naruto shrugged and grinned. I intend to. If Guy sensei says it will help me, then I'll learn. Shikamaru grinned and flopped down in front of Naruto, the board between them. I can show you how to play. I love having someone to play board games with. You know how to play these. Shikamaru nodded his head vigorously and flipped through the book. These are basic books on strategy, but you'll like them. When you want to learn to play, come find me and I'll set up the game. Okay. The rest of Naruto's birthday party was typical of any young boys. They had cake played a few more games, and then he opened his presents. Most were typical of a little boy, a few games, some clothes, Hinata had gotten him a necklace depicting a fox chasing its tail. He hugged her neck and thanked her. She smiled at him shyly and said he was welcome. The adults all congratulated him and patted him on the head or slapped him on the back. He finally came to his grandfather, who stood with his hands behind his back. Seru Tobi had remembered from a previous shopping trip what they called getting the hell out of the office when paperwork became too much that Naruto had admired some hats he had seen and had gone back to have one commissioned.
He smiled down at his grandson. I hope you've enjoyed your birthday this year Naruto. Today was a free day you know. Tomorrow, it's back to business as usual. Now, I have two presents for you. Naruto's face lit up and he literally bounced on the balls of his feet. He hoped it was a jutsu, I'll be teaching you a jutsu. Yes. At our next training session. It's AD rank, so don't expect anything spectacular. Naruto's smile slipped a little, but quickly came back. At least he was learning something new. Now, as for your other gift, well, it's easier just to show you. From behind his back, Sarutobi presented Naruto with a copy of his Hokage's hat. The little boy laughed happily and sat the hat on his head. On top of it was the kanji reading, Shadow of the Shadow. Naruto loved it. Sarutobi laughed and clapped the boy on the shoulder. You can't take mine yet, but that should tide you over for now. I expect you to wear it when we're in the office of course. Naruto nodded his head hard, causing the silken hat to bob up and down. Everyone laughed at his enthusiasm and Sarutobi clapped his hands together. Now, how about we get some ice cream before everyone leaves? Naruto grumbled to himself as he separated the papers into their respective piles. He hated this part of the job and doing it by himself was a chore. But he knew it was part of what he was learning, it was all a part of being Hokage. He heard his sensei sigh as he stamped another form and let his head fall to the desk. Desk jobs were so boring. Naruto, keep separating those papers. The sooner you get them separated, the sooner I can sign them, the sooner we can go home. Naruto nodded and picked up a document, skimming over it. Some farmers in the southern part of Fire Country wanted a ninja to come and kill a pack of wolves that were terrorizing the livestock. Sweet Kami, don't these people know how to fend for themselves? Find one of the interests Naruto. He turned to his sensei and shook his head. Sensei, why are there so many worthless missions? Killing wolves. Grubbing potatoes. These are things that anyone could do. Hi, they are. But these are missions that are used to promote teamwork among our genin teams. That's why I need you to separate them by urgency and difficulty. I know, but it seems so, stupid. Well, I wasn't going to say that, but, yeah, it seems stupid. It does to me at times too. Now then, let's get those separated and we'll go home to work on that jutsu I promised you. Naruto flew through his paperwork like a man possessed. Naruto stood before his sensei practically giddy with excitement. He was going to learn another technique. He couldn't even guess what this one could do. Sarutobi stood before him with a smile on his face as well. He loved having a young, willing student. The jutsu I'm about to show you is, as I told you before, AD rank and while not useful on the battlefield, is practical for getting around quickly outside of a fight. Naruto cocked his head to the side, wondering what it could be. He watched as Sarutobi formed a single hand seal and poofed across the clearing in the blink of an eye. He disappeared from the spot beside Naruto in a swirl of leaves and reappeared in a swirl of leaves. Naruto watched as he formed the hand seal again and reappeared back in front of him. That was the Shunshin Naruto. It is used to go short to medium distances in the blink of an eye. It is great for getting around at fast speeds in daily life but isn't very useful on the battlefield. Truly skilled ninjas can sense chakras and the Shunshin is a dead giveaway that you are approaching. It emits a level of chakra into the air that creates a small vortex that raises sand, leaves, or any debris off the ground. It is, however, fun jutsu to use. Now, try. Naruto concentrated on the hand seal, molded the chakra properly, dot and promptly smashed into the tree before him. Sarutobi roared with laughter and helped the boy to his feet. That was a good first try Naruto, but you need to visualize where you're going. You can't have too broad an area, otherwise that happens. Now envision yourself on the roof of the house and place yourself there. Naruto nodded his head and concentrated, he imagined himself standing on the roof and felt the tingle as the chakra wound its way through his body and wrapped itself around him before yanking him upward and onto the roof. The entire process took less than a second and Naruto opened his eyes to find leaves swirling around him. He waved down at his sensei. Sarutobi smiled and waved back. That was very good, but once again, you need to practice to make it useful and to make it easier to use. Work on it until supper and I'll come fetch you again. Naruto nodded and Sarutobi watched as he shunshined across the yard, and into the side of the servant's quarters, the old Hokage shook his head and chuckled under his breath as he walked inside. 
Yahiko watched as his father taught his son the shunshun and nearly died from laughter when the boy crashed headlong into a tree. Watching Naruto made him wonder about his brother, Asuma. He watched his father head into his private study and followed in behind him. Sarutobi glanced up when he saw his son enter and swung high head back down to continue reading. Father, have you received any word from Asuma lately? Sarutobi sighed and closed the book he had been reading before rubbing the bridge of his nose. No, there has been no word from him since he left to join the Guardians. I don't know if we'll ever hear from him until he wants to come back home. I wish he would though. Why? Another hand in Naruto's training. The aging Hokage frowned at his son and leaned back in his chair. Not just that, no. I miss my son and I'd rather not see him off getting killed for something I don't believe in. We didn't part on the most amicable terms, you know that. I just want my son back home. Forgive me father, I didn't mean to be rude. No need for apologizing. I admit sometimes I am hard on Naruto and he needs more training than you can imagine. There have been many prodigies younger than him that have become full-fledged ninja you know. I know, but it doesn't change the fact that he is my son and I don't want his childhood to evaporate. It won't. I promise. You have to trust that I'm doing what's best for everyone, Naruto included. It's been two years since he began to learn jutsus and so far, he only knows four. That's pitifully low for one of his ability and I'm going to have to start upping his ninjutsu training. I'll have to try to find a genjutsu master though. It takes time to explain the nuances and requirements for those and I don't have the patience or time. I don't know what else to do. The boy is abysmal in the genjutsu area. He can't even recognize one half the time. Sarutobi lit his pipe and took an extra long drag. He let the smoke envelop his head and closed his eyes. How are his studies coming along? Yahiko ran his hand through his hair and exhaled. They're coming along splendidly, although, after Guy's little show with the ceiling scroll at his birthday, he wants to learn more about Fuenjutsu. He seems to think there are possibilities there that he can explore. I began to teach him how to play Go and Shugi last night as well. And, he's, learning slowly. Naruto learns by doing, so it will take several tries before he learns all the nuances and subtleties that make up the games. He tries to be too forward when he plays. Well, he is only six. He'll learn quickly though. Hi, but the thing is, when he's backed into a corner, he can pull off brilliant moves that I never would have read or thought possible. But it only comes in small flashes. Perhaps we can cultivate that mind to think more outside the box. Perhaps. They sat in silence for a while until Sarutobi suddenly perked up. Yahiko, tell me what you think of this. The younger of the two read the small passage and handed the parchment back to his father. I have no idea what that could mean. Do you still believe that Naruto might harbor some kind of Kekai Genke? I do. He's been nothing but one surprise after another so it would stand to reason. A knock at the door made them both turn and Eri popped her head in. Dinner's ready. If one of you would round up Naruto. Sarutobi stood, cracking his back and groaned. I'll fetch him. I want to see how he's doing with the shunshin anyway. Yahiko nodded and followed after his wife leaving his father to walk outside. Sarutobi hummed to himself as he paced toward the door to go outside. He silently wondered if the boy had come along with the jutsu or not. Knowing Naruto, he had probably figured it out finally and was teleporting back and forth across the yard, coming dangerously close to tiring himself out. He opened the door and came face to face with a shunshin using Naruto. Hi Gigi. I think I got it down pretty good. That's very good Naruto. Show me. Naruto nodded and walked back to the middle of the yard. He formed the needed seal and was gone in a swirl of leaves to appear on the roof of the adjacent building. Before Sarutobi could call out, he reappeared again on the tree out back and disappeared one more time before reappearing in front of his grandfather, smile blindingly obvious. That's excellent Naruto, but you have to be careful not to overexert yourself. Using that jutsu that many times in succession could have ill effects on the body. Probably not yours, per se, but I'd rather not find out. Okay Gigi, I'll be careful. Can I use this jutsu to get from here to your office from now on? I don't think you can reach from here to there. What if I push more chakra into the move? Theoretically that would work but I don't know that for sure. How about letting me see if it's possible before you try that okay? Okay Gigi. Good. Now, 
Supper's ready, let's go eat. Several weeks later found Naruto back in the office again, sorting papers as Sarutobi grumbled and grunted as he stamped and signed away. Naruto was frantically sorting the papers into piles and shoving them onto the desk where they were looked over quickly and then put into the outbox. Sarutobi looked over at his grandson and smiled discreetly. The hat had become a permanent fixture on the little boy's head and it never ceased to amaze him how much he looked like Minato, especially since he had insisted that Naruto wear robes while he tended to his duties. The blonde had protested loudly that he hated wearing robes and wanted to continue wearing his shorts and t-shirts but a powerful glare from his grandfather made him hush. In that office you are to look respectable and dignified. This matter is not up for negotiation. Is that clear? Hi, sensei. He hadn't meant to sound so harsh but Naruto's head was notoriously thick if he didn't want to do something. A firm word was usually all that was needed to put him in his place. He watched as Naruto skimmed over the documents and threw them into an appropriate pile before paper clipping them and shoving them onto the desk. He couldn't ask for a more able helper, although, it was free labor for the village, a training mission if you will. Sarutobi suddenly remembered that he had left an important document at the compound and needed it signed by that day. He couldn't leave, but he could send Naruto. The boy would be grateful for the opportunity to leave for a few minutes. Naruto, I need you to run an errand. The boy didn't even look up, just kept sorting the papers. Sarutobi smiled. At least he was learning to multitask, a vital skill for a seasoned Hokage. Hi sensei. What do you need me to do? I forgot an important document at the house. Could you run fetch it please? Naruto growled and pushed back from the desk. He was so close to finishing before lunch too. Without thinking he formed the seal for Shunshin and disappeared, leaving a wide-eyed Sarutobi in his wake. Naruto swept into the study of his grandfather quickly and acquired the document before making the seal again and poofing away. Sarutobi had been counting on the clock how long it took for the boy to get back. Walking was a good 15 minutes away, at a ninja sprint a good 5. Naruto was back in 3. The old Hokage took the paper offered him and watched as his apprentice went back to his sorting like nothing had happened. A child shouldn't be able to shunshin that far. Most adults couldn't make it more than a couple hundred yards if they were in top shape and great at control. Naruto, how did you get this? He didn't look up from his sorting. I used shunshin to get into your study. How? The boy looked up exasperated. Sensei, I did it just like you told me. I used the seal, molded the chakra, and applied control while envisioning where I wanted to be. Naruto, do you know how far away home is from here? Um, not very by Shunshin. Naruto, home is over a mile away. You shouldn't have been able to do that. Especially while distracted. I'm sorry. I won't do it again, I promise. No, no. It's not that. You just, surprised me. Once again. Naruto nodded and went back to doing his paperwork. Sarutobi kept his eye on the boy for a moment and nearly had a heart attack when he witnessed what he thought was a miracle. Naruto wasn't paying attention and had grasped for another paperclip on the desk but couldn't find one. He wondered why his hand felt weird, turned his head to see what was the matter, and found his hand sunk into the desk. He gasped and jerked it out quickly, holding it by the wrist with his other hand. Sarutobi watched out of the corner of his eyes as the boy knocked his fist into his hand, making sure they were corporeal. He didn't say anything though, just observed. Naruto, satisfied that his hand was whole and that he wasn't crazy, chalked it up to doing too much paperwork. His mind was starting to play tricks on him. Just to be sure, he touched his hand to the desk again and found the surface solid and smooth. Sighing in relief, he returned to his sorting. Sarutobi was nearly hyperventilating. He had just seen his grandson put his hand not through the desk, but into the desk. If this was what he thought it was, the boy had so much potential it wasn't funny. He didn't say anything about what he saw and went back to writing but he cut his eyes to Naruto every so often and found no change. The child must have thought it was a trick of his eyes and played it off. But Sarutobi knew different. The boy's hand had actually gone into the desk. It had melted into the desk before his very eyes. He had a gem in his office and he now fully intended to polish it until it shone brightly. He returned to his paperwork with a flourish. They needed to get out of this office as soon as possible. He and Naruto had work to do, so, yeah. Let me know what you think. 
Thanks for listening I hope you guys liked it don't forget to subscribe and leave a like for more what ifs and support the author, see you guys in the next video.